Hello and welcome to the Jurassic Park Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Jost, and today I'm joined by Aaron Beyer. Visit us online at JurassicParkPodcast.com. Today, we're going to be reviewing a few items that were sent to us from Mattel. We have this awesome um, blue the Velociraptor mask, electronic mask. We have this uh, dinosaur trainer Owen figure with a bunch of little props and things. And uh, Dilophosaurus with a little spitter on the end there. And as a bonus, an item that we had on our own, we're going to be uh, reviewing the Baryonyx. So, Aaron, how's it going? You ready? Yeah, I'm doing good. Good, good, good. Yeah, these items are very awesome. I am super pumped to uh, review some of these. So where should we start, actually? We didn't even decide that. Where do you want to start with? Uh... You know, let's do the mask first. I think that's okay. a pretty good one. All right, cool. What are your thoughts? I've been actually um, digging into this one quite a bit recently. Um, my kid loves this mask, and he is he's only uh, just about 11 months now. So he he's um, – no, no, wait, 10? Oh, man. I don't even know. Time goes too fast. You're getting bad. You're getting bad. I know. It's, yeah. It's like, hey, when's your anniversary? How old's your kid? I don't, how old am I? I have no idea. But oh, yeah. this thing is awesome, and he loves it. So I think that's a good sign for this mask. Have you uh, gotten a good chance to uh, to fool around with it? Yeah. You know, I have to admit, um, as a kid, I was not too much into, like, the role play dress-up uh, thing at all. Um, I think I had, like, a Jurassic Park, like, ranger get-up when I was – like six or seven but you know that just really wasn't my thing um and then when i saw this initially on the shelves i was like eh, i don't know like I, I still just just looking at it right cr you know quickly i was like that's it seems so weird to me but getting a hands-on look at this mask this thing is way cooler than i first initially thought um it's got a bunch of sound effects um that when you the try me ver try me mode on this only has like two it has like a growl and it has um, a roar. Uh, the actual version of this has like some hissing. Um, it's got uh, the bark. It's got the roar. It's got the growl. Um, and it's got some really cool mechanics uh, along with it too. So, uh, you know, a deeper look, I'm really impressed by this. Yeah, me too. You know, I think it has a lot of great detail on the mask itself um, before we even dive into the functions and stuff like that. It, it, you know, on first glance, it is kind of odd with the clear plastic and stuff like that throughout it. It's got it on basically sort of like the tip of the nose area, the sides where it would like puff out on the sides of the face of a velociraptor. Um, so it, it's a little odd looking at first, but I think it's very helpful as well as the nose areas when you're, you're using this thing. And, um, I've used it quite a bit, as I said, and, uh, it's helped a lot to be able to see the reaction of the person that's in front of you and all that stuff. So I think it's helpful, but, um, yeah, initially it looked kind of interesting, but I just love the, the detail on like the lips and stuff like that. It, it goes all the way around. It's uh, very detailed, looks like a nice Raptor there, um, Every inch of this thing is filled with like a little, you know, scale or skin here. It's just crazy how how detailed it is. I love it. Um, and my one of my favorite things is the eyeball. Um, the eyeball, which I did not know before uh, Mattel sent this to us. I did not know that the thing moved when you open the mouth, which is an awesome detail. Yeah, um, I'll actually for my video here, I'll I'll open up the mouth, and you're gonna hear the sound effect. Uh, but yeah, like that eyeball moves. Uh, back and forth, um, <laughs> you know, looking forward uh, here. And uh, yeah, both sides do that. That's really cool. Um, yeah, you're right. The the detailing on this is is actually really exquisite, like with the, um, you know, just the different like scales on the on the ridge of the eye. Um, mm -hmm. It's not the paint job is not the same on both sides. So the right side has the big blue streak on it. And uh, the left side is is fairly uh, plain. Uh, we get a little bit of a, the hint of the blue on that side as well. Um, but yeah, you get the different like scale patterns. Um, you know, thicker on the eye ridge, a little bit finer near the eye, and then you get kind of that lip pattern uh, that the Velociraptors have in the Jurassic Park franchise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and aside from that, you know, the design wise, yeah, I, I agree. I thought the the clear stuff was weird, but when you try it on, um, the visual. Uh, the field of vision you have in this mask is actually really well, uh, really good. Yeah, yeah, I was very surprised by that. And um, when you put this thing on, I, I'm <laughs> gotta say, you know, I'm not trying to be like too happy about it, but it was just so comfortable. Like, you know, I want to promote this and you know make sure it's uh, everybody understands how good it is. But man, 
this thing was really comfortable. I'm not lying when I say that. Like, I was surprised because it's just a big piece of plastic, you know, and, and, you know, you have this latch system on the back to make sure it gets nice and tight on you. So you can, you know, just pull it like that or loosen it very easy. Then on the bottom, there's a strap, a Velcro strap, very easy to uh, undo on the fly. But the best part about it is, um, let me undo this just for a second. Um, in here, yeah, like, like I said, the comfort level is perfect because it has this plastic, uh, soft, rubbery um, mask, kind of like you're putting on uh, a scuba mask or something like that. It fits very well. It's snug, and it definitely allows you to see very well through those hole holes in there. So you can see um, how well you can see through there. So you can look on my video and see the baryonics through there. <laughs> or on the other side, you can see Owen. So it works really well. I love it. I think it's very comfortable. Yeah, you know, um, when I was a kid, I went into Velociraptor for Halloween, and I wanted the uh, the more official looking adult mask as a kid mm -hmm. um, that covered like the whole head, and that thing was awesome. Oh um, yeah, almost almost no visibility because you had to stare through the uh, flapping mouth. Um, as a kid today, this is the mask I would choose. Uh, oh, you know, for if sure. I was going out for Halloween. Um, you can see really well. It looks really cool. It doesn't look like, you know, it doesn't look like some weird raptor that is not representative. It definitely represents blue from the film. Uh, so, yeah, this is the mask I would choose uh, if I were a kid today. Um, it makes the sounds, you know, it. this is, you know, aside from, you know, everyday play that a, a kid might get out of this, this is a great Halloween item as well. Yeah, and I want to touch on that point you mentioned before about the blue on the sides of the face. Like, I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure that I really noticed that there was a difference between the sides on blue from the first film. I don't know if I was nitpicky enough to notice that, but um, every toy and every item that has been sent out by Mattel and that I've seen in the stores has the difference, you know, on either side where there's very little on the left-hand side and much more on the right which is really nice, a nice detail that they've picked up across the board and they haven't just skimped on it and they've they've put it on every item, which is really cool. Yeah, you're right. You know, I'm even looking at um, the little baby blue that comes with a different uh, Owen action figure mm -hmm. and it's the same thing. It's got the big blue stripe across one eye and then not on the other. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a pretty neat detail. I'll, I'll have to check out the film to, to see if that's <laughs> actually the case. For sure. Um, I, I just want to play a little bit of the sounds here. So I'm going to just open this up. Uh, there's a few different ones like you had mentioned before. You have this nice, like, purring. I'll put it close. Um, you have just this, this noise, whatever this is. <laughs> I think there's a few other ones. I, I don't know how to get them all out. Do you know? Uh, no, I think like if you, did you, did you switch <laughs> it to out of the, um, out of the try me mode? Um, no. Okay. So in the, oh, up, wow. when you're looking into yeah, the yeah, mask yeah. in the upper right, you just slide the lever all the way to the right yeah, up and you'll here. actually get it into the on and off mode. So that's um, and the, the that on must mode be the is try me. get a few of those different sounds. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I didn't realize that actually. Good call there. New noise. There's that one. Same one. Same noise. I don't know how to get the other ones back. Mm, Ooh, this know. one's interesting. This purring is great. Oh, that's the same one. Come on. Woo! Ooh, there you go. That's a good one. Oh, a bark. Oh, this is awesome, dude. Right? Like, it's a really cool product. Like I said, at first I was like... Eh, you know, whatever, a raptor mask. There's always a raptor mask. There's always raptor role play stuff with Jurassic Park. But yeah. this has got to be the best one I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Now pay attention on the video as you're watching this because the eyeball, like I had mentioned before, moves every time you open the mask. Very, very cool detail. Makes it really creepy looking, I think. So that's my thoughts, at least. Um, you uh, good to wrap that one up? Uh, yeah, I think we can move on. Um, again, uh, you know, really cool product. Uh, you know, thank you to Mattel for sending this one to us. Uh, we really appreciate it. It was really cool. Yeah, so why don't we move on to a human figure here. Um, we were sent uh, Dinosaur Trainer Owen. Um, this guy uh, is interesting. He's got a lot of different things on him. And I don't know how I feel about the... Um, you know, the other items included. The Owen figure is great. Um, but uh, what are your thoughts? Uh... You know, I, I kind of don't know um, exactly how I feel about all the props. Um, I guess 
if you had a couple different Owen figures, because I think right now on the market, there's three different ones that you can get. Um, I think I would put the, the gear on this Owen and just leave it. Um, because as I was trying to get the arm uh, pieces on, the, the the chest piece slides on pretty easy. As I was trying to get the arm pieces on, um, those were a little, those those gave some resistance. Uh, and Wait, I, here, hold on. These are arm pieces? <laughs> Yeah, I had like, no oh, idea, like, dude. I have them on his shins. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, okay. I don't know. Animal trainers keep like things on their arms, right? In case like the animal bites up. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Makes, maybe really makes wants way to bite more sense. Makes so much more sense because I thought he was out to play soccer or something, to be honest. I'm like, <laughs> he looks like a goalie, maybe? I don't know. But, and I'll tell you, I was going to complain. Maybe I still will. I'm not sure because they don't go on the legs very easily. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, and they don't go on the arms very easily either. Um, I okay. feel like after, you know, on, oh. off, on, off, after so long, you might actually start to scrape up some of the paint underneath uh -huh. uh, the figure. Um, but it does give him kind of this cool... Uh, really? How does this... Where does this go? Up top? No, like around his, like, kind of near his wrist. So, like... Oh, I don't know about that. Not not on mine. Yeah. I, I said it was tough. Um, I'm glad I did it before the podcast. Um but yeah, it's really cool. I think um, I actually was okay with the way they handled the raptors in Jurassic World. Um, you know, when they first said dinosaur trainer, uh, I was like, oh, like really? Like that's where we're going? But um, they kind of handled them like orcas, which I was totally cool with. Um, this blast shield, though, that's the piece that's kind of weird. Um, it's got the Jurassic World logo on the front. And it's like a – it's a transparent uh, – you know, plastic so he can see through it or something like that. Um, it's a cool little prop. I don't, again, I, I feel like with the action figures, I'm more of a fan of the crazy extreme weapons from the original line, uh, back in the nineties. Uh, but this kind of, you know, is, is fairly realistic. Um, you know, so I can't complain too much. Uh, I like the idea that this is Owen in his blue, uh, shirt that we've seen him in, in the trailers. Um, and I think the likeness is is pretty close to Chris Pratt for a small action figure. Um, let's see if I can get it, you know, on the lens there. Uh, but uh, yeah, overall, not too disappointed with this one. I think this is one of the neater figures they've offered. Um, I definitely like this one a lot better than the Mercenary. All right, so I um, yeah, I I see on the back of the other box that I have here that they do go on the the arm like the forearm part which is bare naked, you know, that you would want to cover that up. Mine definitely don't. Maybe it's because I've put them on the legs too much. <laughs> they're just, they're just uh, broke now. You broke it. They just, they're just like broken now, but they will not go. I don't know if you can catch this on the video. It's a little out of focus. There we go. Um, they definitely won't stay on at all on the forearms. Oh, maybe, oh, see, oh okay. wait, you know, maybe if stay. I put them so around. Yours are probably stretched out. Yeah, mine, mine are probably a little stretched out, but I can't imagine they stretch out that much. The legs aren't that much bigger. Um, but anyway, those things aside, I did want to compare uh, this other box that I have for a different Owen figure. I just want to take a look at the back and see the likeness is very different on Owen. Um, uh, let's see, I can't hold this still. So his mustache is more pronounced, maybe a little bit of a beard there. Much darker hair, and the face sculpt looks completely different. Um, but that's about it. I mean, it's nothing to uh, concern there. Um, I just wanted to point that out for reference. But, yeah, underneath this chest plate, like you had said, he's just got his normal blue uh, outfit that we've seen in the trailers. Very just, like, completely blue outfit. Um, you see he's got, um, like, some sort of reference number on the butt area. And he's got a big, um, like, hole area on the belt. So there's that. There's a little bit of a, uh, like, little, uh, what's that say, Amblin, uh, Uni, and uh, some information there, copyright stuff on the back of his back, actually. Um, but that's it. I, I think it's a nice little figure. Yeah, like you said, like, likeness is pretty good. Um, sculpt's pretty good. He's got a lot of different motion. He's got his, uh, bracelet, uh, um, not sorry, bracelet, um, watch on his wrist facing inward like it does in the movie, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a great little guy. I, I like him definitely better than the mercenary. Yeah. And like I said about the, uh, earlier about the mercenary, I appreciate, um, the X motion, uh, in the legs so that you can kind of stand him up a little bit better. I think while holding the shield, he's pretty hard to, 
um, stand because he becomes off balance a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but and again, the seams near the knee, they look uh, really just like wrinkled jeans. They did a nice job trying to hide those seams. Uh, I feel like I know you and I aren't a huge fan of articulation um, mm-hmm. in a lot of these uh, smaller action figures, but I feel like this one did a really nice job at, at trying to hide them. And especially once you get all the armor on, um, those seams just disappear even more. Yeah, so I did bring another figure in here so you could see he was the best I could bring over. Um, let's put this back on him so it kind of compares. But I have Nick Van Owen, different Owen, uh, from the old uh, Kenner Hasbro line. He's a little bit bigger, obviously, a bit beefier. But um, I don't know. I just wanted to compare the two figures so you can get a reference as to how big this this new one is versus the old stuff. So there you go. I definitely like the old scale better, but these figures are very nice as well. Yeah, exactly. I agree. So why don't we move on to our last item that was sent to us from Mattel? Um, The Dilophosaurus. Whoop, I can't get him in frame here. So they gave us the green Dilophosaurus with... He's got a big red slash white frill, a little bit white, um, and the the red, um, what do you call them, crests on the top of his head. Right. Um, very cool little little creature. I actually, I'll say I like it quite a bit. Um, the scale is appropriate to the figure, the, the human figure, I believe, here. I feel like it works pretty well with him. You know, if you imagine Dennis Nedry, kind of looks right. I think maybe even a little bit smaller in the actual first movie, but um, scale is very good. Um, And he's got the spitting function coming out of the mouth. It doesn't actually do anything right. Um, But uh, it just sits there. Yeah. The spit, um, the venom just kind of plugs into the mouth. Uh, You can actually take it out if you want. Um, Yeah. This is the uh, standard attack pack Dilophosaurus. Um, We don't have any of the striping uh, along the body. Uh, that we see in some of the other variants. Um, and this one kind of has a, yeah, like you said, that red and white frill. Um, that's not exactly too close to the original film. Um, we don't know if this dinosaur is going to be featured in any other uh, future films or anything. Uh, but as of right now, this one doesn't exactly have the paint job of what we're used to seeing. Um, I do like the Venom, how it's kind of got like that translucent black uh, green color. Uh, that's kind of cool. Um, there was a little bit of thought put into that, which I really appreciate. My only, my only real beef with this product is the hinged um, frill, and I think, you know, we got two Dilophosaurs with the original uh, Kenner line, and there was one without a frill altogether, and then there was the um, electronic one that had a frill that you could like t- like plug on around its neck. There was like a ring that would fit around its neck. Um, I actually like that a lot better than having permanent hinges. Um, When I initially saw this, I was like, oh, well, I'll just kind of, um, you know, take the frill off and I'll have like kind of a nice streamlined neck um, for kind of like a rest mode uh, Dilophosaurus. But the hinges are so thick around, um, you know, on the neck itself that there's really no way to hide it. It it has a very mechanical look to it. Um, That's really my only complaint about this. Uh, figure is that the frill is permanently um it's basically permanently up oh yeah um it, th- there's either just the backwards or forward motion of it um that's really my only complaint i actually really like the scale i like the the pose it's kind of just nice and natural i guess i would appreciate maybe a hinge on the mouth um so that the mouth could close uh but that's True. i feel like that's a nitpicky thing compared to the, the frill um but overall a, an okay product yeah, like I said, I, I like the design quite a bit. I think it, I think it works very well um, for you know the size and the scale and all that. And the hinge thing is definitely a downfall, but I'm kind of okay with it. I really do, it doesn't bother me. Um, I was showing it think... like quite a bit of close ups on my end, and if you you know if you position it from the front, you really can't tell about those hinges. And I think it looks pretty good. There's a few angles where you could sort of you know you could see them. Um, a little bit here and there, but you know, head on, you can't really tell the thing it has these big hinges on the back. Um, I think it looks pretty good from the front, but yeah, that definitely that side pose is a little wonky just because you know you can definitely see it bulges out quite a bit on either side. 
and definitely from the back, it, it just looks like a mechanism. Um, but the detail, I think, is pretty great here. It has actually, you had said something about no striping, right? If you look at the tail, there is quite a bit of black striping on there. Um, very oh, yeah, faint. It's, it's but, fairly faint on mine. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I'm comparing it actually to like some of the variants, which we'll talk about here okay, in a minute. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, the mechanics thing, here's the thing. As an adult who just really has these on my desk at work, um, the hinge isn't the end of the world. I think as a kid, I would have been really disappointed. Um, my, my favorite thing was to kind of, uh, you know, reenact that moment with, you know, where the frill comes out and it's, it's, it's not there in one second and then the next second it's there and you're in danger. Um, that was kind of a fun thing to enact with the toys. I feel like, um, a common theme in this, uh, new line by Mattel is that there's really no disconnected pieces. Um, I guess there's some props and stuff that could get lost, but it feels like anything that's actually, um, really important to the dinosaur itself, um, doesn't come off. We're noticing with the battle damage figures, um, the battle damage aren't mm -hmm. pieces that come out. They're pieces that just slide, um, you know, into the body itself. So you can't lose that piece. And I don't know if that's a, if that's a, um, you know, maybe focus group parents were like, I don't want to buy my, my child a toy that is going to have a bunch of loose pieces, or maybe it's a, uh, you know, a ploy to keep pieces from being sold for like $50 on the internet later down the line. <laughs> um, you know, who knows? Um, this is obviously a decision that they thought was necessary to make with, uh, this line of action figures. Yeah, I wonder about that as well. Um, I mean, they're they're definitely um, like the the lost factor. I think always played into it for me because, like you had mentioned about dino damage and things like that. I had I yeah, I definitely lost every piece of dino damage that I had. I lost my original T Rex arms. Luckily, I have them back now thanks to uh, Ted Brothers in the community. But you know, a lot of those pieces were gone missing and. I luckily do still have, you know, as I just showed, um, the frill from the uh, original electronic um, Dilophosaurus. But, you know, you could definitely lose that pretty easily. You know, it just comes off very naturally. <laughs> um, and, it, I mean, it's somewhat big, so it's kind of hard to lose in that sense. But I think, you know, in, in a lot of circumstances, stuff like that goes missing. Like, especially, like, these little pieces that were included with Owen – you know, these things are very tiny. Um, so these will get lost. Like, no question, they will get lost. They will fall off my shelf and just disappear forever. Because that's how, you know, toy pieces work. They just, somehow they just crawl away and you never see them again. So I, I'm kind of glad that stuff like this is happening where the battle damage and the, the frill and stuff like that. But I definitely agree that as a kid, maybe it takes away from it. But I don't know. I think I still might be okay with, like, Rah! you know just point the frill out as you're playing and just kind of have fun with it i think it might be okay but i i do miss that sculpt of the dilophosaurus you know without the um without the thrill frill i think it looks fantastic without the frill um it's just a cool looking creature obviously identifies with the frill but i think it's very cool without it as well but um not on this piece yeah, now this is the standard attack pack version. Um, there's a couple variants out there right now uh, with some of the Target exclusive uh, multi-packs. Um, I'm showing them over here on my end. There is the one that's uh, very classic to what we're used to uh, from the Jurassic Park movie. It's got this nice green, lime green and yellow color uh, with red uh, striping on the frill. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a nice dark green uh, back uh, here. Um, you know, kind of uh, splotchy stripes on its back here. I'll show that frill again. Um, cause it was out of frame when I first showed it, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's, I think this is actually my favorite of the three that are currently out there. Um, three or four, maybe, um, this one's my favorite. The, the piece of venom seems to be a little bit more of a, of a translucent green color. Um, mm -hmm. but this has like that lime green, which I really like and really appreciate. Um, the other version is more of a brown and teal color. Um, that also has the splotchy stripes on, along the back of the body, uh, and it's got the it's got like a grayish brown, a white, and a dark green uh, stripes along the frill. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fairly nice. Um, I think this might be my least favorite of the ones that are out there, uh, but still a really nice piece. Um, other than that, my only uh, critique on the figure, aside from the hinge, 
would be that this seems to be one of the only figures that doesn't have uh, X motion in the legs. So I feel like this one's actually a little harder to stand up than all the others. It does stand uh, just a little bit harder. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't had too much problem. I think they stand pretty well for me. Um, it Yeah, it's actually working perfectly. I set it down um, and it works fine. Um, but yeah, I do like the... Um, the other one a little bit better, which I believe came with like, yeah, like you said, that retro Jurassic Park pack came with a bunch of dinosaurs for me at least and um, Alan Grant. But I do like this one a lot. And I like the, the other one as well. So I think they're both pretty awesome additions to the lineup. Um, I do like um, I'll show you on the other one. It's actually a little bit more pronounced. The, uh, the one we were just reviewing. It has like this bony ribs. I think that's a nice little detail that I forgot to point out before. Uh, yeah, that's actually really cool, especially because in the original movie, there's that scene where you're very close yes, uh, yes. to the Dilophosaurus, and you can see his ri that's his ribs and that animatronic skin kind of moving over it a little bit as he as he like kind of starts to puff up and, and start to breathe heavy. Uh, that's a really cool de detail they've added in, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, so that um, wraps up those items from Mattel that were sent to us, but we also wanted to do a little bonus one here. Um, this was your pick for today, the Baryonyx. Yeah, the Roar of War uh, Baryonyx. Uh, really cool figure. Um, we've actually had other Baryonyx figures in the past um, in the old Kenner lines. However, I think this one uh, outdoes them um, hands down. I think this is by far the best Baryonyx figure um, we've gotten uh, for the Jurassic franchise. And... Uh, being produced by Mattel on their first run, um, they should be pretty excited about it. Um, I think it looks really close to the one in the film, uh, at least the one we see in trailers uh, so far. Yeah. And what is nice is that it's got like the speckling like it, and I think along the top of the head, it has this really nice uh, shimmery blue stripe. Um, we've seen that in the trailers, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then it makes a really cool sound. Let me see if I can't get this up on my microphone. Yeah, so this one has a couple different sounds um, to it, and uh, I'm actually really excited about this toy. What do you think about it? Dude, I love this one. This is one of those that I just saw you know, initially during toy previews and whatnot, and I'm like, yo, I need that one right away. And I think it is because of this interesting design, the pattern, the coloring, and all that. I, I initially, you know, I'm not always a fan of like, um, you know, the chaos effect and all those different interesting dinosaurs and stuff. But this one, you know, it is interesting with that sparkly blue on the head. And I just, I just love it. I think it looks fantastic. Um, very detailed. And, uh, I think it goes well with the darker blue or gray, whatever you would call that. And, um, the, uh, the, I guess the, uh, the lighter gray underneath, I think it works really well. Um, and that roar and all the sound effects are definitely fantastic. I love those as well. And, it, you know, when you do that, it actually does um, a mouth, you know, roar at the same time kind of moves it. And it definitely sounds different than like a T-Rex to me. It sounds slightly more vicious sounding. I don't know, something interesting about it. Yeah, some people online were complaining that it doesn't, uh, it, or that it doesn't sound like a baryonyx. It sounds like a T Rex, and I'm like, well, I don't know what a baryonyx sounds like because <laughs> the movie's not out yet. Um, yeah, and who knows? In trailers, like who knows what they're really using? Um, we've discussed earlier that they just, they just kind of plug in sounds for what works for the trailer to get people yeah. pumped up. Uh, so we'll have to see. Um, what that scene is uh, where they're interacting with the Baryonyx uh, in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I do like, again, that this one has kind of that X motion in the, in the legs. It's got um, a full range of motion in the arms uh, at the shoulder, so it's got the uh, back and forth and, again, motion side to side. My only critique is that the pose on this one seems a bit... Um, it, it, it is a bit too posed for my liking. Um, again, I'm a huge fan of having... Uh, multiples. So my goal uh, this time around is to get, I think, three Baryonyx. Um, and the curve in the tail for me uh, is is kind of a bummer um, because all three now will have this same exact curve. Um, and the fact that the jaw just hangs open um, pretty much on all of these Rorivores, in the resting mode, the jaw just hangs open on the bottom. Um, and I actually kind of like the jaw in a closed position, especially on this character. Um, 
you know, it kind of gives that nice, narrow, long skull look that uh, I think we've all come to know and love as fans of this dinosaur. And now we get to finally see in the new film. Yeah, you're right. Um, I think it definitely looks better, you know, as a dinosaur. And it looks honestly completely different as a dinosaur when it's closed like that. And it's a very interesting look. I like it a lot. Um, Definitely seems like an odd degree. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's just how far the mouth would go. But um, it uh, it's definitely a really wide uh, roar uh, bite, you know, jaw, whatever you want to call it there. Uh, but I like how this is. It's very interesting here because the jaw is slightly bigger on the top because it has like an overbite that uh, is not touching any of the other teeth on the bottom. It's just like this weird overbite and i kind of like it i mean it's not i'm not saying it's a flaw or anything it's just just the way that this dinosaur is designed it looks very interesting yeah and when i say that like you know this one is is hands down better than anything we've ever received in the jurassic line um part of it is the fact that the skull is pretty representative of what the skull looks like in the fossil record um it does have that overbite um previous toys um the original kenner green one for the jurassic park line um really didn't look like a baryonyx too much. Um, I, I would be willing to bet that they could put four or five other dinosaur names on that package and people would just kind of go along with it because it, it looks very nondescript. Um, and then uh, the Lost World version um, is kind of this like, it, it kind of stands um, with like its tail on the ground, very reminiscent of the Lost World video game, hmm. uh, the way that those ones stand. Uh, but again, the mouth was a little off. It was closer um, I just think this is the closest we've ever seen, and that seems to be obvious since that they've they must have done some kind of pre art, you know, for Mattel, uh, showing them what it was going to look like in the film. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm really excited for this one. I love I love the size compared to the human figures. I love how this um, is going to fit in nicely with my old uh, Kenner stuff. Uh, I think Mattel did a really nice job with this one. Yeah, and I, I wanted to point out some of the little details here and there. Um, the as you said the legs open up but you can see inside here there is one screw um which i know a lot of people complained about the the previous toys with their screw holes we have one here but that's not a big deal because it's holding on this little speaker pattern maybe some are annoyed by that but i don't think so i don't think it's really that big of a deal um the speaker uh, is on the bottom there but as far as the screw holes on the sides there is none there's nothing visible. You know, the the bottom's one thing, but the sides on some of the older pieces had screws all the way across. This has none. So it's very seamless. There is this one <laughs> little seam uh, right here from the tail because you had to plug it in um, from the box because the box didn't have it um, mounted on. There is the button on the top up here. It's a little, you know, you can see the, you know, designation of where to press. Um, but that doesn't really bother me. So I think it blends in very nicely. There's uh, slight gaps here up here up on the head, but nothing nothing too bad at all. Um, but yeah, I think this one is fantastic, man. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, again, we're not going to get completely away from screw holes and seams. These are consumer level uh, toys. Uh, of course, you know. So there's really no escaping that. I think Mattel has done a fantastic job of trying to hide them and limit them as much yes. as possible. Um, mm-hmm. We are definitely at the level of uh, assembly lines that we had in the old Kenner days. And I actually am okay with them breaking off these tails. If it means if it means getting big dinosaurs into small packages to be able to fit on the shelves, I'm all for it. Of course, yeah. And I think, I think these are pretty big dinosaurs. I actually have... Um, now, this is... You, you had mentioned a few baryonyx from the past. I don't actually have any of those. I just... I brought out this one. It's uh, the Spinosaurus, the electronic one from The Lost World. It doesn't work anymore, but it has that similar... I mean, you could stick the mouth down like that, but it does close, so that is a, a nice detail. But for size comparison, you can see here, it is obviously much bigger of a dinosaur. Um, and I used to love this one so much when I was a kid. I thought it was a great, um, you know toy to, to mess around with with the human figures because it was a little bit um i don't know it's kind of on par i guess with those sizes but it felt big but this one is just bigger way bigger than than that previous spinosaurus which kind of has a similar body shape aside from the spine um and as compared to the human it's way bigger like not even close you know this thing could pick owen up and throw him or eat him um so it's very big
Now, uh, if you heard that roar, that was the one I was looking for before because it has that um, the stomping and, and just like thrashing and just sounds very brutal. I love that roar. Yeah, it doesn't sound at all like a T-Rex. So no. I'm excited to see what this actually sounds like in the actual film. Yeah, um, yeah. Because I want to see how closely they got to the sound design you know, from the actual film. Yeah, I'm trying to stand Owen, having a hard time here. Um, but I think that's pretty natural with a lot of figures. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I think it's a very awesome dinosaur. I am pumped about all these ones that we just reviewed. Um, yeah. Any, uh, final thoughts here on these items? No, I don't think so. Um, I think this was a nice start again. Uh, I want to thank Mattel for providing us with some of these products. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, you know, it's good to know that we've got friends in them. Of course, yeah. Thank you so, so much for that. I think these are amazing products. So if you want to pick any of these up, uh, we'll have information in our show notes and all that. So this is uh, this has been fun, Aaron. Yeah, uh, we'll, we should do this again soon. For sure. And we will. Next week, we'll have even more reviews for you. We've got a bunch more lined up for the coming weeks here. So stay tuned on all that. Make sure to, like I said in the beginning of the show, go to our website, JurassicParkPodcast.com. Find all our information there and show notes. You can follow us on Twitter at Jurassic Park Pod, on Instagram at Jurassic Park Podcast. And of course, download the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or really wherever else podcasts are found. And uh, definitely subscribe, like, and share this video here on YouTube. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching and enjoy. Five minutes. Drop what you're doing and leave now.